Hello, uh, my name is Kevin, and I am not a YouTuber, I am not a streamer, I'm just some random dude on the internet who plays games very, very badly, but I do love Elite, and since there really aren't any uh, current videos out there that show uh, version 1.9 uh, in any depth, I figured, hey, I'd make one. Or maybe some, I don't know, we'll see how this goes. Um, so yeah, there's no professionalism here, this is just me, some random dude, talking and about to play the game very, very inefficiently, very, very poorly. If anybody watching this actually knows how to play the game, they're going to cringe a lot. Uh, you're gonna hate me, you're gonna be like, why did you do this? Why did you do that? Stop doing this! This is so god, so painful. Feel free to comment, I will probably listen, maybe? We'll see, I'm just not good at games. Um, but that's okay, I love them, and hopefully you will love this. But uh, first things first, this is Elite, which is uh, based on uh, the Elite games, um, which obviously have now ended up in something like Elite Dangerous. Uh, this kind of really harkens back to the old school stuff. Uh, version 1.9 is the most recent version. Uh, it is currently in development still, uh, not as much as it was in the past, but it's still trucking along. Other thing to mention, is that it is highly extensible. It's got a lot of mods which are called expansions, uh, or OXPs as they are described. You can see down here, Manage Expansion Packs. Uh, I love this music, so I'm gonna feel sad that it's gonna be quiet in just a second here, but there you go. So what we can do here, you can update the expansion list. Right now, there's about 700 expansions in this setup here uh, that can be downloaded directly from inside the game. Uh, I'm told there's about 400 more that are not currently in the system. Um, I've got about 400 installed. It's crazy. Uh, I am sure that of my 400, probably a good 10 or 15% of them will come, uh, are kind of interfering with one another, but I don't care. Everything works just fine so far. Haven't run into any major problems. Uh, so uh, yeah, so there we go. So this is my uh, current list of expansion packs. I'm not going to uh, uh, waste your time by just going and describing each one, but I'll just so sort of show you the idea here. There's ambience ones, which change the graphics mostly, dockables, which add different kinds of uh, stations that you can land on, different kinds of equipment that get added to the game on top of what's already there. A lot of really great pieces of equipment, uh, like telescopes and things like that, which we'll uh, hopefully get to at some point during this playthrough. Uh, okay, so HUDs. Uh, there are some really great HUDs. My favorite one is uh, Vimana HUD. Uh, I will be using that one, but there are some others. Vimana just feels the coolest to me. Uh, it is not necessarily the best. I wouldn't say it's the best. There are some others that show information differently, and if you're the sort of person who prefers uh, different kinds of uh, presentations of the HUD, you would want to switch to one of those. But I'm going to use Vimana because it is the most immersive to me. And then some mechanics, which uh, add different features to the game, uh, changes the way the market works and things like that. And then some miscellaneous ones, uh, and then missions, which add a whole bunch of different things that you can do in the game, in addition to trading and mining and so on. There are some uh, other uh, things going on that uh, we'll probably get to, which I haven't really explored too much because, like I said, I'm a terrible, terrible player of this game and very, very slow at it. So none of these missions have really come across for me yet, just because I haven't really gotten very far. Uh, and then retextures. Uh, sometime in the last few years, there was a big update in Elite where the uh, where graphics got improved tremendously, and a lot of the older uh, elements of the game didn't get updated, or a lot of the ships didn't get updated because they were expansions and so they weren't part of the base game. Uh, and these are retextures that add some things. Uh, some uh, of the other stuff in the ambience adds to the uh, the visuals of the planets. There are two major strands of uh, planetary visual improvements. I went with one. There's another one that uh, kind of does similar things, but you can't use them together. If you're interested in checking out either one, I would recommend going to the, the wiki uh, for Elite. Uh, or going to the forums where uh, the active folks there are happy to help out and kind of discuss the various uh, benefits of each. I've gotten a lot of help from uh, the folks over there. Uh, and then a whole bunch of different ships that you can add to the game in addition to the ones that are default. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of ships, a lot of ships. Uh, different systems, new weapons, uh, and, and so on. Uh, so that's what I've got installed right now. Uh, like I said, I've got about 400 
installed out of the 700 that can be installed through the game itself, uh, plus the 400 or so that are not part of the uh, the installer system. It's it's a lot. It's 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 a lot. Uh, so that's really where the game shines is in its extensibility and the fact that there's just been this history of like over a decade's worth of really good things going in. So uh, we're going to go back in here and we are going to start a new game. So if we start a new commander, you can see uh, because of the expansions that I have, there's a bunch of different starts available. Uh, your normal start, easy start, a tutorial start. Uh, the strict mode runs without any expansions. It just sort of locks them out. Hardships is one of the expansions that adds a lot of uh, new features to the way uh, ships are handled. And then these modern starts. The modern starts basically do things like uh, giving you additional uh, equipment at the start so that you don't have to struggle to get going. Uh, old school gamers would prefer to go with like normal or easy because you just have to start with the bare bones. Uh, but modern start gives you a little bit of extra stuff. Fast track start. And then got other different kinds of start like haulers and miners, expediters, advanced miners, and so on. But we are going to go with, ooh, let's see, Modern Start Standard gives us the fuel scoop, the witch base, uh, fuel injectors, scanner targeting enhancement, and targeting system. The value of the witch base fuel injectors cannot be overstated because it lets you kind of move at speed when you are mass locked which if you're familiar with Elite Dangerous means you, you're basically too close to a sizable object and you can't go really fast. You can't go into what Elite Dangerous calls Super Cruise, what uh, Elite uses is called the, the Taurus Drive. Uh, the fuel injectors is really valuable just to, just to basically cut down on travel time. Fuel scoops, fuel scoops are useful as well because they let you refuel in space. They also act as your cargo scoop if you are picking up uh, objects from uh, mining. Um, but, you know, easy start, it's just sort of your bare bones and you just gotta pull yourself up by the bootstraps. You also get a little bit more money. You could go with normal start, but that's just, that's gonna kick me in the ass. So, I think what I'm gonna do is I'll start with the standard because I am gonna be filming this and I don't wanna just be staring into space for a long period of time. No one's gonna wanna watch that. So, we'll go with modern start. There we go. Now it's gonna load in. All that wonderful music is gonna go away. And... It's going to take a second, and we're waiting. There we go. Okay, so uh, again, uh, I have 400 expansions installed, so if you're playing this game for the first time and you don't have expansions installed, you're not going to see a lot of the things that show up here. That's fine. Uh, the default game, the base game is great. Uh, I just am kind of crazy about these sorts of things, and I love to just load up. So here we go. Incoming message to all commanders from Galcop. A situation has occurred which will potentially threaten the whole galaxy. There have been reported sightings of huge stellar serpents appearing in several systems. These creatures are preying on innocent traders, are a menace to ships, and must be eliminated. Therefore, effective immediately, all commanders are authorized to attack these beasts, and a 500 credit bounty will be paid per serpent killed. Fortunately, these creatures seem to be territorial and appear singly, but that does not mean they will be tolerated. They do not have witch space capability, but tend to use the wormholes of witch space capable ships to move between systems, so tracking them can be tricky. When available, situation updates will be notified to all commanders upon docking at system main stations. Good hunting, commanders. Message ends. All right, so this information here isn't going to be really useful to us. This is sort of the default start uh, in info. Uh, here it is, a Cobra 3 and 100 credits, but before you even think about combat, you'll need to fit her with a witch with witch space fuel injectors and a beam laser in that order. Right now, running away is more important than fighting back. Well, we already have the injectors. Uh, we've already got a couple of things here, so we will start differently. I'm just going to kind of basically ignore this. Uh, I did try it this way when I first started, um, and I did have a save that began that way, and, and it was fun. I mean, it, it works pretty well, but since we started out a little bit ahead of this, we don't need to worry about it. However, we do see here, if you do go to Zounce, take this package. You'll get a few credits for your trouble. You can look for other jobs like this, but fair warning, some jobs might attract unwelcome attention. We are going to take the package. Uh, now, this is going to be, uh, this is one of those expansions here. Uh, do you want more asteroids? So, uh, asteroids uh, are useful for mining. You're really going to want them if you're doing a lot of mining. The problem is you kind of need a fairly, not high end, but like higher end than my computer in order to really be able to take advantage of this. Uh, if you have too many asteroids on screen, you're, you're going to have a bad time. So, I just keep this at 1x. 
And then uh, the base game doesn't respawn asteroids after you shoot them, so you can deplete a system from your asteroids. I don't play efficiently, and so that's really not a good thing for me because I may not pay attention well enough, and I may end up not being able to utilize the asteroids that are there uh, in a way that is good. I have a hard time chasing down um, the stuff, that, the loot that I'm uh, collecting. So I will have it respawn. And then if I want to make changes later on, I can, um, but you would need to go into a system uh, that you can get to either in the main station or at other locations in the systems. So I'll just show it at the main station. I don't need to worry about it too much. All right, so this is me. I am uh, Commander Jameson. Uh, I should mention uh, that this HUD here, what we're seeing here, is one of the expansions, mostly <clears throat> under the default system. It's just black, and a lot of this stuff doesn't really uh, mean anything uh, at the start. But So... We're in the Cobra Mark III, we're in the present system of Lave, um, we are docked. We have fuel to go, enough fuel to go seven light years. We have a hundred credits in cash, uh, we are super poor. We are, have a clean legal status, which is great, uh, and we are harmless, which, you know, is true. Uh, and the next list here is the equipment that we have in the ship. Uh, scanner targeting enhancement, which was added from the start. The witch drive fuel injectors, again, added at the start. Fuel scoops, fast target selector, those were uh, added at the, uh, for the start. And then the rest of this is what we normally start with. System drive, core en energy unit, primary shield generator aft and four. Through space hyperdrive, Taurus jump drive, uh, the HUD, and uh, a, a dinky little laser that makes a tiny little pew pew sound and is basically worthless. Um, but since I tend to run away rather than fight, at least in the beginning, um, and because I'm terrible at it, uh, I just leave that there for now. Uh, so one of the things we want to do first is change our HUD. We're going to go here to the Dockside Services, which has services for the, for the station, uh, but it also has uh, services for uh, basically the game itself. So we're going to go over here to HUD and MFD Selector. Uh, MFD is Multifunction Display. Uh, you might be familiar with it if you play Elite Dangerous. So we're going to go in here and we're going to switch to the Vamana HUD 6 MFDs. So there's two options for Vamana HUD, one with six uh, panels that you can look at and one with 12. For right now, we'll go with the six. You can change this at any time when you land on a station. We're going to go with six because I don't need 12. I don't have enough systems that will really be valuable. I don't have enough systems, uh, MFD systems installed. One of the things about Elite is that basically your starting ship is Junk doesn't have much to go on. It has very little in the way of uh, ship systems, ship equipment. One of the major goals that you get in the early game is you just got to build out your equipment list uh, so that you can uh, efficiently and effectively, you know, kind of fly around the systems. Uh, so right now we're basically flying blind. Our uh, our targeting systems are just crap. Our we don't have a telescope, which you'll see eventually is is really really valuable. Uh, and so we don't have a lot of MFDs. We could look at this and see what might come up, but this will clear once we uh, get out into space when it realizes, hey, you don't have any of these things, uh, which is fine. So, uh, All right, so here we are. Uh, if we are going to start right, we're going to save our game. We're going to save ourselves. I'm going to call myself Archibus because that is who I am on the Internet. There we go. Done. All right, next up, we're looking at the ship outfitting. So this is where we can buy equipment for our ship. We only have 100 credits in cash, so we, we ain't touching this right now. Uh, but here's where we, can, where we can go when we start making some money. These are organized by tech level. So it starts at the lowest tech level here uh, and then works its way up as you go to the higher tech levels. Different stations are, or different systems have different tech levels. So this list is pretty small because right now we're in a, a relatively lower tech level area. Uh, so this is what's available. We will get into more detail here as we go. Right now it's not going to do us any good to look at this and just salivate over there, everything that we can't buy. All right, so next up we're going back into the dockside services. Uh, you can see on the top left side there, uh, those are all the different interfaces that you can get to in a station. Again, that that element of this HUD is part of a, one of the extensions, one of the mods that you can get. It's not part of the default, uh, but it is really useful, so I like having it here so that we can kind of uh, keep track of where we are in the game. So here we are in interfaces. Uh, I can disembark and do some fun activities out on the station, but I don't have enough money to do anything with it anyway. 
So uh, we can go down here to, uh, this is asteroid tweaks. This is where we were before we can kind of switch how many asteroids show up in the system and so on. Uh, and we will go through some of these later on, but for right now, again, we have too little money and not enough equipment to really do anything valuable uh, with these things. So we can look at the bulletin board. Uh, oh, yeah, so this comes up. Uh, this is a new feature, come blah, 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 so we kind of ignore that. All right, so we can do these kinds of missions, uh, garbage scout missions, asteroid removals. Um, uh, we could theoretically do these, but what you really want to, before you start this, at least as far as I'm concerned, is get the telescope on there so you can actually find things in outer space. Otherwise, you're just flying around like an idiot. Well, I'm flying around like an idiot anyway, but uh, you're flying around like a super idiot just trying to find stuff. Uh, and it's just not, it's, it's not fun. All right, so we're going to get out of there. Cargo contract deliveries. I can't do any of these uh, because I just don't have uh, enough stuff. I, 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 I can't c carry any of this stuff. Uh, but if I uh, did, once my ship is tricked out a bit and I get maybe bigger cargo space, I could do this. Uh, and you kind of have to do some shuttling missions to deliver cargo and so on. Um, can't do that right now. Parcel contracts, these don't take uh, space in your cargo, um, but a lot of these, again, you can't really do unless you have better equipment. So, for example, videos of Vacuum Cricket. Um, that one, uh, it's not too far away. I might eventually be able to do something like this. Uh, DB Scene has some videos of Vacuum Cricket that need to be taken to Essence within 243 hours. The journey will take about 117 hours and you will be paid 91 credits upon successful delivery. That is a crap contract, but they're all crap, crap contracts at the beginning because nobody knows who you are. They're not going to pay you a lot. You're going to do little crappy little shit missions for a while. That's the whole point though. You have to kind of build out your, uh, uh, your reputation uh, quite a bit. So. Uh, we're not going to do those for right now. We really just, just it would just be painful. Um, there's an embassy district where we can see, uh, where we can get citizenship uh, by visa uh, hours uh, to go to different systems. Um, we will probably start doing that at some point. Uh, one of the things that one of the expansions uh, does is it makes it difficult, to, well, not difficult, makes it cost money to dock at stations because they basically get fine you for landing at them uh, if it's a type of system that is locked down a little bit and uh, the b default game doesn't do that default game lets you kind of land anywhere without penalty but the uh, the OX OXPs that I have installed some of them kind of add to the immersion of the game and make different system types have different features uh, all right so we could do some other things here system history planner all this stuff is really useful down the road email system um, so here we go this is our inbox new registered new pilot registration which is just the starting stuff we have accepted a contract and I can read that this is to confirm that you have accepted to deliver related uh, not news tax returns to Zeons by that time for a fee of 15 credits <laughs> Wow uh, failure to deliver the parcel on time will result in a reduced fee up to and including the whole amount Galcop parcel services cannot be held responsible for any misadventure or property loss resulting from the acceptance and execution of this contract. Fly safe, Commander. All right, so we can delete that email. That's fine. We'll delete all of those and exit. So anyway, back along here, and as we saw before, we had the HUD and MFD selector. Uh, Galactic News Network. Oh, this is some news. Okay, serious news. To ensure their security, corporate systems have agreed to acquire a visa for all undocumented travelers. Are you up to date on your citizenship papers, Commanders? In a shocking political twist, dictatorships and communist systems have happily adopted the same law. The president of Siksa, the preeminent corporate planet, told us, we are appalled that our well-meant initiatives and technologies are copied by rogue governments. To avoid an economic freeze due to the newly introduced laws, all pilots currently in a system requiring a visa will be provided a one-day visa free of charge. The Siksa president confided in us, the first shot is always free. That's only good business after all. What he meant by this, the truth is, we don't know. Well, that is basically the, the added uh, immersion stuff about the different systems that I was talking about. So, we'll go back. All right, so let us now look at ourselves again. So this is what we have installed in our system, in our, in our, in our ship. Uh, this is our manifest. We are not carrying any cargo. Uh, we've visited no systems. We're just sitting here. Uh, Stellar Serpents, uh, the Levain UPS branch rates your courier reputation is average. Yeah, we're average. 
we would have to get a tow bar to get reputation by salvaging derelict ships. The Bounty Hunters Guild considers you a harmless outsider. Yeah, we haven't done any bounties. And our traders rating is amateur. We have sold nothing, which, you know, sure. Parcels, we have to deliver. Uh, reputation, we are feeble in the feeble beginnings of passenger ferrying, parcel delivery, and cargo contract business. Yeah, sounds about right. All right, let's look at the galactic chart. So this is our local area. We are in Lave. Um, you can see that the little cross mark on Zeonsi here down on the lower right here. That's because that's our mission to drop off the parcel there. These are other systems that we can get to. So the green circle is the range of our uh, fuel. Right now, uh, so we have a fuel range of seven. Uh, so it means we can get to a few of these, but not all of them. Uh, if I uh, switch here my system log, okay, so if I hit I, so this is uh, a graphical representation of the different kinds of systems that we're looking at. Basically, it moves from tiny little plant to a big, enormous nuclear reactor thingy, uh, from a poor agricultural system to a rich industrial system. That really determines, helps to determine uh, prices at the market. Uh, poor agricultural system needs high, need higher tech items. Uh, and they will pay a premium for that. Rich industrial systems need uh, raw materials and will pay a premium for those. So it just sort of uh, varies over the, the over the value of the systems. Now, if we look here at the types of systems, we're looking at anarchies, feudal systems, multi-government dictatorships, communists, confederacies, democracies, and corporate states. And uh, again, because of that, that expansion that I added, all of those will behave differently. The base game doesn't really treat them differently. It's just sort of flavor text to a degree. Uh, but the OXPs that I've added give us uh, some uh, extra uh, details, uh, different sh uh, uh, stations that we can land on. And it also prevents us from easily docking at various places. We'll see that pretty soon. All right, so we're going to want to go to Zeonsa. So I have moved my uh, cursor over to there, which means that that is our next, drop -off, uh, next stop off. And if I go to my galactic chart again here, we can see this is the uh, Galaxy 1. There's, I think, four galaxies. Uh, the base game just names them Galaxy 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, but uh, there's an OXP that gives them names. This one's called the Old Worlds. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, these are the, the systems that you go to to get to the other galaxies. I don't know. I've never been out that far. far. It's just to kind of stay local. I'm like I said, really bad at this game. So we're back to here. Okay. So next up, we're looking at the planetary do uh, data of Zeance, which is our next de destination. Uh, it's got an average industrial economy. It's a corporate state. It's got a tech level of 12, which is, I believe, the highest. Is that, the, is that correct? I think that might be right. Uh, highest or very close to the highest. Uh, population 5.3 billion, uh, human colonials, uh, gross productivity, average radius and the distance. Uh, most of this is flavor, uh, but some of it is useful. So for example, the tech level determines what kind of, of equipment that we can buy. And the distance is basically uh, whether or not we can reach it or not. 5.6 light years is within our fuel range, which is 7.0. Uh, the number of hours that it will take, uh, obviously, while we're traveling, uh, it's basically like time dilation uh, through, you know, regular Einsteinian kind of light speed shit. So 31.4 hours, we will not actually be spending that amount of time. Unlike in Elite Dangerous, where you could, in fact, spend that amount of t actual in-game time just flying from one place to another, this one kind of uh, is a little bit more forgiving and it just take a minute or two. But uh, in game, it takes 31.4 hours, which will matter if you have a time limited uh, parcel delivery or, or contract of some sort, uh, and you kind of need to find an efficient route that takes as little time as possible. The Galactic Register called Zeons is a tedious place. They didn't correct it in later issues. Uh, oh, dude, I'm, I'm an idiot. Let me try this again. The Galactic Register called Zeons a tedious place. They didn't correct it in later issues. Zeons is actually one of the best guarded, fun-packed secrets of Galaxy One. Tourists will find attractions like the monstrous Hurricane Kev. Oh, that's fun. Uh, dominating a huge swath of northern of the northern hemisphere. The planet is also known for the Zeons Aerodrome, Xanadu Zoo, Chateau Dief, and the perpetual parties going on in virtually every hotel on the planet. There's a tax level and a treasury, uh, and the planet Zeons orbits a G6.5 V star. All right. Now, we are over at the market. So uh, this 
this is laid out in a really good way based on an OXP, uh, one of the expansions that was added. It uh, lets you filter by what's carried or in stock and sort by price. Uh, gives us a differential and things like that. So right now, uh, because of where we are, if we look again at this, we are in a... Go. We are in a rich agricultural uh, system, which means that most of their commodities are going to be uh, raw materials. If we go over here, we can see food, fresh water, textiles, slaves. Uh, you know, I don't want to touch those because those are not legal in most places and you will get into a lot of trouble uh, carrying those. Food, fresh water, textiles, minerals, all of these are uh, below the galactic average, which means that you're likely to make a profit if you sell them at a place that needs them. And then uh, over here, uh, some of these, as you can see, machinery, they need machinery, and so it costs more to buy them here. One of the uh, expansions adds uh, the, the differentiation between tonnage storage uh, or tonnage goods, which uh, require hold space, and then gram and kilogram uh, storage uh, or items which don't require storage space that you can just kind of carry around in your backpack, basically. Um, that is not in the base game. In the base game, everything requires tonnage. But here, uh, we could theoretically uh, buy some gold and it wouldn't use up our tonnage uh, storage space, which you can see at the bottom. We have 100 credits in cash and our load is zero of 20 tons. One of the things that we're going to want to do pretty early on is increase our cargo space in our dinky little ship uh, because, yeah, it's going to be painful to just fly around with just 20 tons. Uh, but for right now, let's uh, let's see. We have a, a f we don't have a lot of money, so we, we, we don't really want to spend too much. Uh, let's get some food. Oh, boy. Uh, we we picked up 17 tons at four uh, four credits each. That leaves us with 32 credits in cash, which I know already we're not we're going to want more because we're going to get a, we're going to get penalized when we go to Zalance because they're not going to let us dock without getting fined. So we want to bring this down a little bit. We we'll give ourselves 40 credits. Eh, that's probably enough. Okay, so now we have food, and we have 15 tons loaded in out of our 20, and 40 credits to our name. So we're going to go ahead and quick save, because I am a save scummer extraordinaire. You will get used to that, trust me. All right, let's just confirm. Yeah, we're going to go to Zeance, and let us depart. So uh, I fly with the stick half of a, a Logitech SciTech X56. I do have the throttle, uh, but for some reason, um, even though uh, Ulite, uh, Ulite uh, reads that I have it, uh, which I can show you actually, uh, you can see the game options, it reads that I have this, the, the throttle. Uh, it just doesn't let me assign anything to it. So unfortunately, I can't use that. Uh, I use the hat to do my thrust. That's really the main thing I need it for. I also have uh, a program, an app called uh, Touch Panel uh, installed on my iPad and installed on my PC. And so I basically have like a stream deck kind of thing where uh, you can just use an interface on the iPad to uh, use as hotkeys. Uh, so uh, I use that. It's really uh, kind of useful and a little bit more immersive. But anyway, so you can you can set up your uh, stick here if you want, um, but mine is already set up. So we are going to uh, go back to the game. And here we are. So uh, this is the Vamana HUD here down on the, on the bottom. I'm going to uh, do a couple of things here first. Uh, I apologize for uh, basically being very obscure about this right now. But I am going to switch over to that MFD on the left hand side, that green box. Cycle it to empty and then I'm going to switch back to multifunction display number one and cycle it over to show me my ship here, the details about my ship and myself. Uh, at the beginning, since I don't really have any equipment, uh, nothing uh, that I can use uh, to display, that is really the only thing that's of value to me. So it just tells me what I've got here, uh, who I am, and, and what's going on. All right, so the HUD. Uh, let me. Uh, I'm, I'm flying off into the in middle of nowhere, which is fine. Uh, so th again, this HUD is uh, specialized. Um, most HUDs don't look like this. Most HUDs, to my mind, just look a little bit cheap. Uh, I like the Vaman HUD because it's pretty and I am very basic and I just I just like it. So uh, left side and right side, those two panels require special equipment for the Vamana HUD that we don't have installed yet. 
So we can't really get anything, any functions out of those right now, which is why it says unavailable module not installed. So we will ignore that for now. Down in the middle center, that is our radar. Uh, the radar is brown when you're kind of a mass locked, which means that you're too close to objects that you can't, you, you can't uh, use your uh, torus drive to move at really high speed. When it turns green, you can engage your torus drive. And when it's red, you're gonna die because someone's attacking you and you're a terrible player and you will be dead in a few seconds. Well, at least that's just me. Uh, okay, so uh, to the left of that, and I don't know what all of these things do, which, you know, my bad, but here we go. You're stuck with me. Um, right now, it is showing us uh, in that little blue radar thing, it's basically showing us the nearest uh, big feature of value. Uh, the square is going to be the nearest uh, station for the system. If it's a circle, uh, it means that's the, that it's kind of locked onto the planet. When it's red, it means it's behind you. When it's green, it means it's in front of you. If we go around here, there we are. Oh, hey, look at that. That's the station. That's the main station. Okay, we're going to keep flying away from there. So you can see on that blue uh, radar thingy, it's not really radar, it's just showing you your vectors. So as I'm moving my throttle around, uh, which again, or not my throttle, my stick, you, you can play the game with the mouse. It's not really great. Uh, most people, I think, play with the... Uh, uh, with their keys uh, and you can you can fly around I can do that here like I can roll I'm using my keys it, it works pretty well I really like having my stick so um, but you can see here uh, it's showing you where where you're vectoring as you go those little yellow pips um, so uh, next up uh, to the left of that it is showing uh, yes I am uh, not locked on to the main station but it, it is aware of the main station and that I am 51 kilometers away from it to the right of that, I don't know what those little those little asterisks are. Honestly, I've never really paid attention to it. Uh, someone will probably tell me at some point, or I will figure it out eventually when hit in the most crucial point of time when I need to know. Uh, but I don't know right now. So, uh, to the right of that, those little arrows, uh, those are my installed uh, indirect fire weapons, as my torpedoes or missiles. Um, and uh, to just below that it says my Ingram 1919 A4 pulse laser. That's this little guy here. Beep. Beep. Dinky little pew pew. It is absolute crap. It's not worth anything, but it can get you out of uh, a little bit of a trouble if uh, if you need it. Uh, it's just it's not it's not the best. Uh, starting it's a starting laser. It's uh, it's training wheels laser. Uh, okay, so to the left of the radar, we have our speed, our fuel, our altitude relative to the planet, I believe. Um, and then uh, showing what our cargo level is and our cabin temperature. Cabin temperature matters if you get too close to the sun, uh, which I can find, where's the sun? It was over here somewhere. I saw it a minute ago. That's the planet, whoopsie, nope. Ah, okay, fine. Where's the sun? I don't know where the sun is. Doesn't matter. Anyway, if you get too close to the sun, you're gonna start to get hot and you're gonna have a bad time. Uh, you don't wanna do that. Over to the right, uh, we have the forward shield and the aft shield, the FSH and the ASH. Energy, uh, the 256, energy drops as you're using certain kinds of equipment and as you're using your lasers. Uh, if it drops to zero, then obviously you can't do anything with it. And then L temp is your laser temperature. You can overheat your lasers if you use them too much. This little guy can't really do, I mean, I can, I can keep shooting and maybe overheat, but yeah, it's, it's not a lot of power in there, so. It, it doesn't matter too much. And then finally, armor down at the bottom. I don't have any armor. My ship sucks. It's 0%. Okay, so what is next? We are... I really want to find out where that sun is so you can see a cool effect. Uh, let's go find the sun. Why can't I find the sun? There's no sun. Maybe it's behind. Oh, there we go. Look at this. Watch this. Oh, no, there's glare. Look at that. That's pretty cool. You can actually get a piece of equipment that reduces the glare because this game is that granular. Uh, and in fact, it, it's so granular that the, uh, the glare reducing equipment actually uh, decays over time and then it stops working, which is very cool. Okay, so uh, here's my speed down here. I showed you on the bottom left there. My speed, my max speed right now is 350. Uh, now, I do have the Witch Space injectors, which means that it can use fuel from my Witch Space drive to go really fast. Uh, 
So there's two ways I can go really, really fast. Uh, one is with the Taurus Drive, which is the default, which you have when you start the game, even if you're on the easy start. Uh, and now that my my HUD, and now that my radar is green, that means I can I can do that. So I can turn on my Taurus Drive and watch my speed go up. Boom! I am going 11,200 units per time, uh, which is really useful. That'll get me through this, around the system really fast. So I can turn that off. The other option, if I am too close to a mass locking object, which we'll see uh, as we get into the next system, uh, if I can't use my Taurus drive, I can use the witch space injectors to just squirt some fuel into my engine, uh, witch space fuel, and then just go fast. It withdraws, it, it, it drops my fuel level, uh, but it's basically like nitrous. It's, it, it's, um, it, it's cool. Uh, so here we go. There we go. So, but you can see my fuel level is going down. We don't want to use this too much uh, if we're going to travel very, very far, which as we saw over here, we are. We're actually going close to the edge of our fuel range, uh, which, uh, which is seven. So we're not going to do too much more of that. All right, now we're going to use our witch space drive. And now we are locking on to the Xeon system, which point nav beacon. Boom, okay, so blue hyperspace means everything is fine. Red hyperspace means you are gonna die because either you got pulled off by some random thing or the Thargoids are gonna get you. All right, so here we go, let's speed up. So we're looking at our radar. Uh, I don't really know exactly what all these colors means. It, it's listed in, uh, in the documentation. I'm just lazy and dumb, so I don't pay attention to it as much. Uh, I figure I will learn it as I need it. But right now, that little green blinky blink means um, that is, okay, so what is that? That is the, um, oh, there we go. That is that guy. That is the uh, the nav beacon. Uh, I have an OXP on here, an expansion that actually turns the nav beacons into advertising, which is uh, actually really fun. Um, and this one uh, has two sides, and we can we can kind of fly around and take a look at it. Uh, I won't spend too much time on this. Uh, it's not that interesting, but I do find it amusing. Uh, there we go. Okay, so ooh, let's turn here. More salvage than you can handle. You need some. Okay, Wooly Nelson. Oh God, that's a that's a chimpanzee with a hat. Okay. Anyway, uh, that's the that is the witch base nav beacon. That's where you jump into on, on every system. So as you can see now, oh, there's the sun again doing its little glare thing. Now, as you can see on the blue, uh, the, the blue circle, I've got that green circle there. That is the planet. Now, what you can see around here, these are all a bunch of asteroids. Luckily, most asteroids, maybe all asteroids, don't mass lock you because if they did, wow, that would suck. Uh, mostly, it's just going to be ships and stations and planets and suns and so on. There is a ship uh, flying around here. Where are you? You're up there. So, Oh, there he is. Look at that. Who is that? I don't know. Let's see if we can target him. Nope. Okay. Uh, the targeting system is... Ah, there we go. It's a Cobra Mark I named the Furious. He is clean. He's not a pirate. Uh, the targeting system is a little bit goofy. Uh, I, I'm i sure there's, it makes sense. I don't have a fully complete grasp on how it works and when it works in a, in a certain way or not. That's okay. I'll be fine. Uh, okay. So what we want to do, uh, because we uh, picked up some food, this is the commodity market for this system. And as you can see, uh, the differential is plus 28.3%, which means we will make some money here if we can make it to the station. Uh, there are probably some other stations in this system as well. Uh, that's just the main one. Uh, we can't really find them easily without the uh, telescope, which will make, or sorry, the uh, the ASC, uh, which is, uh, I can't remember what the acronym stands for or the, the initialism stands for. What it basically means is that you can target uh, bigger objects more easily and just kind of figure out where everything is, um, which we'll use that little blue circle uh, to tell us. Uh, but we don't have that yet because we are a crappy little noob and we need to go and buy one once we have some money. So here we go. We're going to move along. Now, I only have 1.3 in uh, light years worth of fuel left. If I burn it with my injectors, it's it, it, well, obviously, it's just going to use it up, and then eventually, we're not going to be floating dead in space because you don't need that fuel to fly normally in regular space, but it means we won't be able to do the high speed. However, right now, we need to get out of range of that ship that we that we looked at in order to be able to actually use our Taurus drive because it's showing that the radar is brown 
which means, of course, that we are too close to that to really be able to engage the Taurus drive. Okay, no big deal. We're just gonna fly, fly, fly. Uh, do I wanna do a little bit of witch space just to get it over with? Yeah, let's do a little bit of fuel injection. There we go, okay. Let's get some green, come on, I want green. Uh, okay, there we go. Now I'm gonna switch to my Taurus drive, boom. Okay, all those little white dots are asteroids. Oh, we got mass locked by something. Now we can, but we can still, oh, oh. Oh, there's a ship, it's gonna mass lock us. Gotta get out of there, okay. Uh, so this this is a lot of what the game is is just trying to avoid things that will make you slow down um, so now we're gonna approach the planet and once we get close enough to the planet that blue uh, that blue circle will switch us to show the location of the station once we get better equipment we'll be able to find that station ourselves more easily because it will be highlighted right now again we're basically just flying mostly blind uh, oh, there's another ship. Where Where are you? Oh, what are you? Uh, ooh, look at that. I don't know what, how close it is. There we go. It's a Fair to Lance carrier. Oh, that's a that's a pretty one. So I can target things like within about 24 kilometers. Anything farther out than that, my system doesn't target, uh, which probably can be improved. Uh, but I we I, I haven't really paid too much attention to that. There's so many different targeting systems in this game that do that target different things at the same time. It's really complex and useful, but it also means it's really complex and complex. And since my pea brain can't really track all of it all the time, I just let it do its thing and don't worry about it. But let's go fly by, past this guy to see what he's up to. Look at him. That is a cool looking ship. It's a Fairdalance carrier. I think this is probably from one of my expansions that are installed, um, but I'm not 100% sure. Maybe not. Look at that guy. Wow. Hello. Okay, we're not gonna run into you. We're gonna fly away from you. There's another ship over there, uh, somewhere out in the in the black over there. Oh, there he goes. I can barely see him flying that way. Kind of see him near my near my reticle. There he goes. But okay, th that's enough. Uh, so let's keep going. We've got to try. Oh, now okay. So you look at that the red circle, or red circle, the blue circle. Uh, I don't even know what to call that. It's got a name, I'm sure, but I've forgotten what it is. Uh, now it has switched to that green square, which means that's where the station is. So, oh, hey, look at that. There's the station. Now the station... Oh, God. We're probably going to die. We're going to die. This guy's going to come and get us. i got to get out of here. He wants to attack us, and he wants us to dump our cargo, which I absolutely do not want to do because I spent my good old earned money, my hard-earned cash on that. And I don't have any left, so if I have to drop my cargo, I am gonna suck and be dead. Okay, all right, okay, let's get out of here. All right, I got out of his way. So basically, he's, he's yeah, he's uh, he's not he's not gonna be able to, he's not gonna come after me. All right, now that means we have to try again, find out where that station went. Um, but what was I talking about before? Yeah, so that station, um, is a uh, uh, you had that um, that icosahedral station. It also has a nav beacon out in front of it, and that nav beacon is oriented towards the entry point of the station. So as we can see here, that is right there in, uh, at my reticle. That is the nav buoy, the nav beacon, and that is the station. Because we now have the blue circle showing us the main station, it tells us it is 75 kilometers away. I will be able to target it at about 24 kilometers. Uh, shortly before that, it will tell me, hey, you can, you know, contact the station to dock. Well, yeah, joke's on me. Uh, I'm not allowed to dock there because this station, the system here, as we saw, is corporate state and they require a visa. Well, I don't have a visa, so I'm going to have to uh, just kind of get in there anyway and take the fine. Uh, I did notice something here though that there's a little bug in the game uh, probably because of the OXPs that I have installed where it doesn't show all of the systems correctly so what I need to do whoops whoopsie doozy that's not what I want uh, I need to um, restart the game uh, save and load the game once I get back into the station you can only save and load in the station I'm gonna have to do that in order to kind of fix my uh, my uh, my galactic chart, but that's okay. Uh, we'll do that. So, uh, but while I'm here, I can show you this. Uh, this is forward, this is backwards, this is port, and that is starboard. And you can see on the radar the, that little arc will show you which way you're facing. A lot of players, as I understand, a lot of players use these back, left, right uh, fairly heavily. 
I haven't done that much, mainly because I'm not getting into fights and stuff. So, But the other thing we can do is look at our external view. This is us, our external views. There we go. That's that, and that's that, and then that's that. So, anyway, uh, here we go. Let us zoom in uh, to the station here. We are now 47 kilometers away. Let me use some uh, some of my fuel to get in there. Now it says, oh yeah, docking clearance is required. Uh, of course it is. So we're going to target the station once we get within 24 kilometers. There we go. And now I can uh, contact traffic control and they're going to tell me, nope, there we go. This station is accessible only to citizens and visa holders, Commander. You are denied. Well, I don't care. So there is a little bit of a risk uh, going in uh, hot without clearance because the station is going to continue to uh, bring in and send out ships and uh, you could potentially crash into one. Um, I haven't done it yet, but I've come pretty close uh, to crashing into ships as they leave the station because if you don't have docking clearance, you're not going to be put into the queue and there's not going to be a gap of time when the ships that are going in and out uh, will, will let you pass. So you just kind of have to cross your fingers and take your chances and then also pay the fine when you get there. You'll also end up getting fined if you go in too fast. Uh, if you have clearance, uh, you kind of want to stay at 140 speed or below. Uh, but since we don't have clearance anyway, it doesn't matter. So these little red dots, uh, I think this is an OXP, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, these little red dots are telling us the, the vector to get into the station. Um, but here we go. So, okay, look at that, that ship up there. He's probably going in. Is he going in? Yeah, and there's one coming out. He's going in. So we're just going to kind of stay out of their way a little bit while we while we jam ourselves into the station um, and take the fine. So this is rotating. I need to match rotation or else I am going to scrape the sides of the mailbox, mail slot, and die. Here we go. Cross my fingers that no one's coming out. Ooh, there we go. I made it. All right, here we are. Now we are inside the system, inside the station. Here we go. You deliver lighted and not news tax returns and are paid 15 credits. Yay. You have been fined 2.7 credits for unauthorized docking. Docking without asking for clearance is not allowed here. Well, it's it's allowed since they charge you for it. A lavish full sensory holocaust to promote the pink volcanoes as ounce fills almost a third of the docking facility with a cacophony of smaller ban banner ads for local shops and restaurants on every side. Dodging through the virtual presentations, you almost collide with a genuine station attendant who's there to scan your registry and charge six in-station fees. So that's why I needed a little bit of extra cash, because I had, was going to have to pay some money. So, now we are done there. Oh, hey, ooh, the news. iNews flash, ghost ship sighted, tragedy in the wake of the sighting. Two freighter captains have been rescued from their escape pods in a yet undisclosed system of this galaxy, uttering incoherent babble and their hair having turned snow white. The last detail is even weirder, as one of them appears to be a horned blue bird. <laughs> uh, from what little sense they made, they claim to have sighted a ghost ship, a spooky Cobra 3, which crossed their way on the witch, uh, on the witch point route, apparently fooling their scanners and not reacting to any kind of communication. It seemed to be headed to the sun. Shortly afterwards, all kinds of menacing, ghostly, and horrifying things started to happen, resulting in the destruction of the freighters involved and the complete loss of their escorts. The captains appear to be the sole survivors of the mysterious events. Full story on iNews at 10. Uh, I think that's also one of the expansions. Uh, adds these missions and adds these little bits of color that uh, you can go and track it down if you want to. I ain't getting anywhere near that for right now. Okay, so this is us again. Now we're going to go directly to the commodity market. 28.3% differential on this one on the food. There we go. Look at that. So we started out with 100 in cash. We are now at 253.5. Um, okay, so because we are in this uh what is this this is a rich industrial or average industrial we want to pick up finished goods and then sell the finished goods to the uh to the agricultural systems but the first thing we want to do is quick save and then reload because uh that will reset the the glitched out galactic chart which should put the names back in all the systems uh, it's an easy fix there once this is loaded in there we go now let's look. There we go. Now they're showing up again. Not all of them are, but we will figure that out when we get to it. Okay, so here we are in Xeonce. 
there's a system over here, Isanor, which is a confederacy, probably will allow us to dock without charging us, and it is a very low agricultural system, poor agricultural, which means that they are in desperate need of equipment. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in here and we are going to buy some stuff. So we're going to filter to carry it or in stock and sort by price. Machinery, luxuries, and computers. I feel like computers is probably the way to go, although we don't have a lot of money, so it's probably not going to help us a lot. Let's see. We're only going to get three tons. Uh, that's not going to be good. Machinery gives us five tons. Mm. Ah, I don't like that. What about luxuries now? Nah. All right, well, let's do some machinery. We'll do five tons of machinery with 13.5 in cash. Uh, not great. All right, so we are back here. Let's see. We have some parcel contract deliveries and Galcop bulletin board stuff. We aren't really going to be able to do much with those right now. We still don't have any good equipment. Email system tells us we have confirmed that the parcel contract was successful and we got our docking penalty. Okay, so let's exit there. Now, uh, I do have the uh, an expansion that automatically refills my Witch Space Fuel. It does charge you for that, um, but I don't have to do it manually. So uh, normally you would do that from in here, the ship outfitting, um, but I'm not doing that. Um, so we are now going to quick save and get out of here. All right, so we are moving on. Moving at speed, getting out of the way of the station. We're going to want to uh, inject some fuel here just to quickly get out of the way of the station enough so that we can turn on our witch space drive. There we go. All right, blue. We have not been attacked by Thargoids. Uh, all right, here we are. This is uh, Isanor. That is a ring planet. The rings are added by the uh, by one of the expansions, uh, and so the rings are basically treated as non-existent. They don't do mass locking or anything like that. They're just cosmetic, so we don't really have to worry about them. Uh, I do like to try to avoid them just because it breaks immersion if I'm flying through them for just like zooming fast. So. All right, so because we're in green radar, we can go ahead and turn on our Taurus drive. Oh, we got mass locked by somebody, but not for very long. Here we go. Oh, oh. Okay, so here we go. Let's get out of his way. There we go. Now we are looking for the station, and the station is around here somewhere. Ooh, ooh. There we go. Oh, he is on my tail but not on purpose oh boy there's so many people you generally want to get out of the way of the main routes to the station from the nav buoy just to avoid that but i tend to be impatient um so here we go we are looking for the station again once we've got some better equipment we'll be able to spot it more easily i just know that it's somewhere around the ring but i don't remember where exactly so we're just going to keep going this way Hopefully we don't get mass locked by anything, and then we can approach the station once we switch from the red from the green circle to the green square. I swear I'm not colorblind. I just keep forgetting the colors. Uh, okay, here we go. The station is around here somewhere. I'm going to go around this. Like I said, it's it's cosmetic only, but I like to play as if it were not. So we're going to go around the rings and fly up. Ooh, hey, look, we're getting really close. But, ah, excellent. We got really close uh, without mass locking, so we don't have to uh, fly for too long. Now that we are within 19 kilometers, I can target that and get some uh, get tra traffic control. We have ships on approach to the station. Please hold for clearance. Please fly to the station facing side of the nav buoy and wait for clearance. So we're going to do that. Now, uh, sometimes this takes a really long time. I've sometimes been trapped in a queue of 17 ships, and then eventually I just give up, and I fly into the station. I get fined, uh, and but you know, it's a way to avoid wasting all that time. So we're gonna go and waste a little bit of time. 
Uh, but if it starts taking too long, we're not going to do that for very much longer. So I'm going to which I'm going to inject some fuel just to get closer. Now it's asking me to get to the station's facing side of the nav buoy, which is going to be on one of these little red dots. And you kind of have to stay pretty close, and, and then it'll switch to a different message. Oh, hey, look, we've got authorization. So we're going to slow down. We're going to turn, and we're going to do this proper. We're going to be we're going to be respectful of the way. Uh, the way the system, uh, the station wants us to do things. So we're going to fly, fly in here going no more than 140. Uh, if, if we go too fast, it'll tell us to set speed between 10% and 40% of our, our max speed. And that is, in this case, 140. So now we're approaching. Uh, I don't need to worry about uh, matching the rotation of the station yet. Uh, it's going to ask me to. It's going to say, hey, make sure you match rotation. Uh, but. We don't have to worry about that yet. One of the reasons I really like using my stick is because I have more subtle control over that. If I were just using the keyboards, this behavior would not be easy because I'd have to do tap, 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 which is uh, very irritating. So using using a stick, or you know, you could use a gamepad as well. It, it's about as equally useful. Uh, it lets me do this much more fluidly. Here we go. Boom. We are in the system now, in the station. And we have landed. Okay, the bureaucracy of Isnor has been honed to a fine art. After filing a document request with traffic control, you have to file an approach vector form, followed by a request for use of mooring facilities. And this is before you even disembark. You stare a little hopelessly at the long hallway of permit offices that wait beyond the docking bay, and to rub it in, you're charged 3.5 in administration fees. Great. So now we have 10 credits in cash. Let's hope that we can make some money. Machinery. Yes, uh, we made about 100. All right. So now that we're in Isinor, uh, they don't really have a lot of value here. Oh no, wait, I was reading the wrong, I was looking at the differential, I'm looking at the percentage differential, we actually have a fairly valuable uh, food uh, trade here because it's at minus 55.7% off of Galactic Standard, which uh, which is the average, which means we'll probably make a fair bit of money if we can load up. Um, first thing I'm going to do is save, and then we're going to check... We don't have, we have uh, one news. Oh, here we go. We just want to go sailing. Ben and Benita Potter have written a formal complaint to Quayan's Tourist Ministry's Other World Adventures reported yesterday. It was lovely to start with, said Benita, but after three hours of formal greetings, face painting, hugs, massages, more hugs, the tide has gone out and we couldn't sail our boat. Not much point in having unusual oceans, added Ben, if you can't get near them. That's fun. Uh, okay, Galcott Bulletin Board parcel contract deliveries let's just let's be optimistic yeah we can't do any of these you, you know you can't because it's gray um it they're looking for more experienced courier yeah we're not one yet the bulletin board uh, gives us some things uh we could recover recover stolen items recover special cargo do some asteroid removal cargo donation. <laughs> I'm not going to do any cargo donation. That's ridiculous. Uh, but the problem with the recoveries is that you you have a hard time finding them without good uh, scanning equipment, which we don't have yet. So we're not going to do that. All right. So, nope, don't want to do that. What we want to do is, oh, do I not have any money? Oh, I didn't have any money for, for fuel. So here we go. Now that I have some money, I can buy fuel because if you if the, the OXP that I have installed, like I said, buys fuel automatically for me. But since I didn't have enough when I landed, it didn't didn't do it. So I can now buy the fuel here. Okay, so we're down to 341. Okay, not so bad. Now we go back to here. All right, so I can buy some food. I got 20 tons of food. Excellent. Now we want to deliver this to a uh, industrial system. There's a really industrial system way down here in Sorius, just on the edge of my ability to fly there. If I do that, I'm going to have 0.6 light years of witch space fuel left, and that's going to make it real slow getting into the system, getting into the station. I don't want to do that because I, I don't want to have to fly stupid. Uh, the injectors are really valuable, so I prefer to do uh, nearby jumps. Uh, I could do Tianisla. Um, that one is a democracy. I should be able to get in there okay. Because uh, they're not going to charge me uh, uh, for... They're not going to fine me for, for landing. Uh, so I think I'll go there. If I look at that. 
as you can see, is an average industrial democracy with tech level of 12. Once I have more money and I can start spending money on my equipment, uh, that is a valuable system because the higher end equipment uh, will be there. So anyway, uh, oh, this is a this is a really good system because it's it's part of the lore here, uh, part of the important lore of elite uh, or elite as it goes. Tianisla is well known in the region. In the past, it was the scene of some of the most massive battles the galaxy has ever seen. The result, the huge Tianisla orbital graveyard, now the final resting place of the super rich and famous. Due their due to their ingrained shyness, all Tianislans wear masks in public. Ugh, wow, that hurts. Twenty twenty one. Uh, their heads completely encased in Baroque constructions. Now, that would actually be cool if we could do that. Uh, if you like good company, noise, fun, excitement, go elsewhere. Great. Um, anyway, so the Tianusla Orbital Graveyard is interesting because there is an expansion that I have installed that adds the graveyard to the game. Uh, this information is always here, this, this, this flavor text, but the graveyard isn't in the base game. Now, there is one, uh, and you can kind of fly out there and see all the wrecked ships. Uh, all right, so that's nice. Um, let's save this. Have I already selected my destination? Yes, of course I did. Um, and I've bought my food. So let's go back that way. Let's go to Teeny Slab. Now, uh, I realize that mostly I'm just flying between places doing trade, which honestly is my jam. That is what I like to do. Um, if that's not the sort of thing that you like to do, that's fine. You will eventually be able to do a lot more. You'll be able to go fight, do fights, uh, do different kind of mission contracts, which uh, I know I haven't really shown too many of those, uh, just because they're not going to do me any good at this point to, to look at them because I can't take them. Uh, but if we continue, you know, if we continue this this playthrough, we'll actually see some of that. Um, but for now, this this is uh, this is what I'm doing. I, I want to make a few thousand. Uh, so that I can actually uh, buy some equipment, get some more cargo space, make some more money. It, it does actually rapidly ramp up as you go. Uh, this early stage is just slow on it, just a, a, as most early game stuff is. Um, it would have been even slower if I'd done the easy start or, or the normal start rather than uh, the modern start because I wouldn't have witch space injectors. Uh, I wouldn't have uh, the fast target selector. Ooh, I could probably show you that. That would be fun. So there's this stuff called equipment, and you prime equipment by cycling through all the equipment that you have in, uh, installed. So if you prime, you can see on the left side next to the blue circle, it's cycling through the equipment that I have. Right now I'm primed to none. There's the fast target selector, ship identifier, Taurus synchronization, fast target selector mode changer. So let's go to the fast target selector and hit that, activate that. So, oh, I don't want to do that. Uh, well, that's the only target that is the witch base selector. I, I don't want that. I don't want to attack it. No, let's not do that. So uh, anyway, if I'm closer to other objects, it'll it'll uh, shift through the different targets that are available. Right now, the only thing on my radar is the uh, witch space uh, nav beacon. Don't want to do that. So let's... Um, switch back to none so I don't accidentally uh, target weird things. Oh, and I should also probably uh, turn off my missiles. Safe. Missile safe. Okay. Let's uh, accelerate. Let's go. Ah, let's go. Ah, come on. Those ships are too close. Oh, come on. No, thank you. This is why the witch fakes injectors are useful. I can fly away from this faster and get back. There we go. Now we can use the Taurus drive. And go towards... Uh, there go some asteroids. Now we go to the planet. And once we get closer to the planet, we'll be able to see the station. Oh, there it is. I can see it already. Look at that. Look at me go. That's the station right there. And it looks like there's another station, possibly, or is that a ship to the right? Oh, try that again. Ah. Oh no! We're gonna get attacked! Don't want that, don't want that. Let's get out of here. Don't want to lose my cargo. I mean, I could drop my cargo to make them not want to attack me, but boy oh boy, that's bad. No! Stop! Go away! No! I'm gonna die. That thing is gonna come and get me. Oh god, okay, okay, okay. 
Whew. Now the real problem is going to be how do we approach that station without running into them again. So we're going to go this way. We'll fly out of the way of that guy. We'll come in close. There we go. Now I'm using my injectors just to get in close because I don't know if he's going to come back and try to attack me again. That's the nav beacon. Is that ship the one that wanted to get me over there on my radar? I hope not. Probably not. I think he's. I think he was just the other random dude that was out there. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Do not get me into a fight, please. I will die. Okay, now we are within 24, so I can target you. Excellent. Okay, traffic control. Oh no, Q position two. Okay, that's fine. I think we're safe. So here we go, coming up close. Ah, look at that. That was fast. Docking authorized. Let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, so I'm going super fast right now. He doesn't want me to go that fast, so I am going to get in like this and slow down. 140. I think that thing on the right side of my screen there is the, the, the casino. I think, maybe, um, that's one of the things that gets added to the game if you added one of the expansions. Um, it's a... Uh, it's another place that you can go to do gambling and things like that. I've been to one of those a couple times. Um, it's uh, it's kind of fun. Um, I mean, it's just another one of those activities that you can do in the game. Um, all right, we're going to fly in here. All right, an impersonal overhead voice repeats station regulations in several standard languages as you disembark then moves on to announcing the arrivals and departures of commercial transports. A public safety message about deadly Tianisle and uh, deadly solar activity follows. Tuning out the chatter, you scan your manifest and registry and the station deducts six in administration fees. All right, ooh, look at this. When you leave your ship, you find a fat furry feline waiting by the airlock. Greetings, Commander Jameson. Uh, everybody calls you that no matter what. Uh, I am Caleb Queequeg, uh, the science editor of the Teeny Slick Chronicle, which I'm sure you will have heard of. Uh, yeah, let's say I did. Uh, we are the biggest, most respected news organization in the galaxy. Oh, then of course I've heard of you. We have heard some interesting rumors of a hidden planet deep in interstellar space, three light years to the west of Beorley, when we are looking for an adventurous pilot to try and find the planet and take some pictures of the station that apparently orbits it, as well as dock and interview someone on the station. Would you be interested in accepting this assignment? Sure, it's going to be a while before I get out there, but sure. We will fit a special camera to your ship, which will take up to 10 images. You only have to prime the camera uh, using Shift N. Uh, this is what I was talking about before, priming the equipment. Aim your ship and take the shots using N, which again is the, just the, activating your equipment. Should you succeed and return some good images to me here at Tionisla and hopefully an interview, we would be very grateful and pay you a fee of 500 credits for your trouble. Okay, fair enough. All right, let's go ahead and sell some stuff here. 474, okay, we're getting close. We're getting close to having enough money to, I don't know, piss in, or I don't know how that how that goes. All right, let's save here. We Oh, to buy the pot to piss in, that's it. Um, all right, no emails. The bulletin board uh, giving us, again, some recovery stolen items, uh, things like that, which, again, we don't want to do just yet. We still need some more money. Parcel delivery, oh, we could potentially do that. Let's see, old looking legal agreements. Oh boy, but it wants us to go all the way up. You can see that little uh, red uh, cross in the upper left hand. Uh, it wants us to go all that way. Mm, I don't know, next contract. Oh boy, top right. Nope, not gonna do that. All right, well, it's too far away. So here we are, let's see. So we are in Tianisla, which is a uh, average industrial. And here's what we could buy. Machinery at minus nine point, uh, minus seventeen percent. Uh, luxuries, computers. Uh, let's see. Okay, we could get ten tons of machinery, six tons of computers. I feel like machinery is the way to go. Let's see. But computers gives keeps us uh, some cash, so we can actually load out as much as we can and still have enough to pay docking fees and things. So I'm gonna do that. I'm going to buy that, 
And then we're going to want to drop this off back at Isinor. Maybe we could go to Bimera. We haven't been there yet. It's a multi-government. That could be workable. Let's try that. Let's do that. So I'm going to save. And then uh, I think I'm going to call it here for right now. Um, I am going to uh, continue uh, recording, um, but I'm going to stop the video right now and just continue on the next one. Uh, I don't want to be running this one, running these videos for crazy, crazy amounts of time. Um, uh, but I will continue and probably upload this once I figured out how to do that. Uh, I've done it once a year ago with another game. So, yeah, I am super professional. Um, but anyway, uh, that's it for me for right now. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it wasn't absolutely the most boring thing ever. And I hope it gives you some idea of what you can do in Ulit, which is a really fun game. Really good. There's a lot of stuff to do, uh, which we've done none of it, but we will get there, I promise you. Thanks. Hopefully you, you will uh, watch the next one when it comes out.